بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد although it may be hard and difficult for many of us to understand that sometimes it becomes necessary to refute someone and refute them outwardly by their name mentioning their name so that the people can be aware of the mistake and avoid the mistake but many people unfortunately in the ummah today they view that as harsh or they view that is incorrect or something but it's not incorrect if you go in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and you go in accordance with the Salaf of this Ummah how they preserve the religion of Islam and the science of Hadith Jarwa Ta'adil that if they were to accept the statement of every single individual no matter what they said and not criticize the people who were liars or the people who were sinners or the people who had done innovation then the religion would be according to the opinions of everyone and we wouldn't have anything as far as a foundation for Islam because everyone would have explained the text in their own way many people would have lied and the people that would have accepted that as hadith or accepted that as the truth so by criticizing individuals for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which requires sincerity and requires uh, wisdom that this is a way in which we defend the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and preserve the religion of Islam and it's imp uh, imperative for us to look at some examples from the sunnah and from the salaf of this ummah like the sahaba anhu, majma'in, as evidence for that that of course we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran many of the people or some of the people of the hellfire like Fir'aun and, and other than them from the people who were some of the wickedest people on the earth and that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about Dhul Khuwaisara uh, who from his progeny would come the Khawarij and that the Prophet ﷺ said about Muawiyah عنه, and this does not take away from the status of the Sahabi whenever the Prophet ﷺ if he mentioned a Sahabi as an example to criticize for whatever reason that it became necessary to make clear their uh, status or their situation or uh, something about their behavior that didn't take away the fact that they were Sahaba and that they were the best of this Ummah and that we should follow their example in righteousness and those things that the Sahaba you were united upon so this is not taken away from Muawiyah but this just shows us the example that the Prophet himself even named those people who were beloved to him his Sahaba he criticized them for mistakes and named them even so that is not the kind of backbiting that is uh, sinful. So listen to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qala Alayhi Salatu Wasallam Amma Mu'awiyah or Qala Alayhi Salatu Wasallam about Abu Sufyan. Or this is actually the statement that was said to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam about Abu Sufyan from his wife from Hind. She said to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and he didn't rebuke her for this. She said, Inna Abu Sufyan Rajulun Shahih. She said, Verily Abu Sufyan, he is a uh, stingy person. You know, he's not spending like he should. And the Sahaba they refuted one another by name when it was necessary to do so. Not out of desires, not out of uh, hasid and envy and, and hatred, but out of a necessity to when they saw, saw that something was a mistake in the religion of Islam, it became an obligation to refute that mistake. And as far as naming the individual, sometimes it becomes necessary to name the individual, to refute that particular individual. And depending if they're from Ahl Sunnah or not, uh, there are different rulings pertinent to how we uh, refute them. Do we maintain their status and and with respect and so forth or do we belittle them if they are someone of innovation who has 
who is innovating in the religion of, a, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, then we don't have to respect their status. Let's listen to this hadith, uh, this uh, narration of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. لَإِنْ أَفْتَيْتُ بِمِثْلَ مَا أَفْتَى بِهِ أَبُو مُوسَى لَقَدْ ضَلَلْتُ وَأَذْلَلْتُ رَوَهُ Bukhari. This is in Sahih Bukhari. That the statement of uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said about Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, if I had made a fatwa, you know, a, a legal ruling, like Abu Musa made, similar in this situation, I would have been misguided and I would have misguided others with that. So letting us know that that may seem harsh to us, but this shows us that it becomes necessary sometimes. If something is a mistake, it's a mistake. No matter who says it, that it has to be uh, corrected. And that is from the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah, the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, is that we correct the stake mistakes of one another. And this is from wanting good for one another to help that individual and protect the community from the mistakes of that individual. And to preserve the religion of Islam. So I hope that that is clear and there are so many countless examples, but I just wanted to do something very short and limited to give us an idea that this is what the Prophet and his Sahaba that this is the minhaj that they left for us, that we should defend the religion of Islam and we should refute a mistake when it becomes apparent and we should advise one another when, the, when we have mistakes and if someone is on a madhab or a methodology which is clearly going against the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, it's an obligation upon us to not just correct them but to uh, sometimes be stern against them and stern in refuting their mistake and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.